All right, we're doing the same stuff today. It's uh, just it's got some of the fractions involved in it. Um, <coughs> remember, if two numbers are underneath the radical sign, you can multiply them as long as they're both underneath. This would be the square root of 18. If one of them is not, it just stays like that. Three times the square root of six. Okay? Same thing with fractions. If, uh, if they're both underneath square roots like that, you could put them underneath <laughs> one sign and then simplify it. Okay? So when you're doing these, like this is like one we did before. We gotta figure out what perfect square goes into 128. And it would be 64 times two. So again, if you don't know that, you always wanna start about halfway and just start dividing. 128 divided by 64, and you'll get 2. So the square root of 64 is 8. So this turns into 8 squared to 2, but then don't forget there's a 1 half times that. So half of 8 is 4. So that's 4 squared to 2. If they're both under square root, first thing you should look for to see if either of the numbers is a perfect square, which in this case, they both are. So the square root, remember you can separate it. And then the square root of 16 is four, the square root of 25 is five. This is the same thing. Square root of one over square root of nine, they're both perfect squares. Square root of one is one, square root of nine is three, okay? So those are really nothing different. This one, it just has a number out in front, just like that, except it's not a fraction. This means you gotta take it times seven. So, 3 sixteenths will not reduce, but we really wouldn't want to, because this number is a perfect square. That turns to four. So the answer is seven squared to three over four, now you can never simplify, like say this was a uh, eight under here. You couldn't reduce it because that's under a sign and this is not. But if this number, if they're both outside, then you can reduce it, if they will, but will seven over four reduce? Mm -hmm. No, so you just leave it like that. Here, I wouldn't want to simplify it first. Does everyone see why I wouldn't? This is a perfect square. Okay, but now you got to see if this will reduce. Does any perfect squares go into uh, 56? Four. Square to four times, uh, that should be 10, 14. So the square root of four is two. So this is two square roots of 14 over six. So like here to seven over four wouldn't reduce, but here two over six will. Two goes into itself once, into there three. So it's just the square root of 14 over three. Okay? So that's what we're doing today. It's got these fractions in it. Here, none of these are perfect squares, but you can simplify 20 over five. Square root of 20, I would just write it as one. What does that mean? Four. four. So this is square root of three times the square root of four. Square root of four is a perfect square, it's just two. So it's three times the square root of two, and we typically put the number in front. It's not wrong if you don't. It's just easier to write and easier to say. If you wrote square root of three times two, it's the same thing as writing it that way. Here too, before you start multiplying or simplifying, one of them is a perfect square. So just make that into the six. And then these are both under the square root sign, so you could simplify. Six over two is three. So it's square root of three times six. 
which we would just write as 6 squared, so 3. Here you got some options. The 8 is just going to stay out front. This is not a perfect square, neither is this. So you could do it two ways. You could simplify this, you know, like we did here, and that, and then multiply them. Or you can multiply those two together, but you'd get a huge number. You know, 27 times 72 is really big, and it's kind of hard to find a perfect square. You might be simplifying quite a bit. So since these are small numbers to work with, I would just do this one first. What perfect square goes in 27? Nine times three. What perfect square goes into 72? Nine times eight. But eight, we'll simplify again. There's a bigger perfect square that goes into 72. 16. 16 times... Nope, 16 yeah. doesn't. Thirty-six, yeah. Thirty-six times two. And then don't forget, there's still an eight out in front. So this would turn to three. This would turn to six. So if we wrote it all out, it would be eight times three times the square root of three times six times the square root of two. It's all multiplied, so what you'd want to do is multiply the outside numbers. 24, 8 times 3 is 24, times 6 is 144. And then what do you get when you multiply that times that? Six. Square root of 6. Now, they kind of deliberately give you a number like this, and some people say, well, that's a perfect square, too. That's 12. So you may write it as 12 square roots of 6 and then get it wrong. Because remember, this doesn't have a square root sign over it. It's just this times that times that. It's that number. You don't square root something unless it's got the sign above it. 